won't believe what happened last night. Damian Maya, Ben Askren, a grappler's dream matchup. When Minnie touted as the best grappler in the UFC, title contention was up last night. And you guys, they couldn't, Ben Askren couldn't have fought a better fight. He had the perfect fight strategy. He's defended five submissions beautifully, but all it takes is one. And if we can count on anyone in the world, to find the one submission that will catch Ben Askren, it's Damian Maya, you guys. So much to talk about. First round, I mean, listen, you can see Ben Askren's strategy from a mile away, and it was beautiful. Four minutes of stand-up, and then one minute of takedown, control, and avoid submissions. If he followed that all the way through, he'd be great. The problem is he followed it for two rounds, and in the third round, he violated his own fight strategy, and he went for a takedown, four minutes left in the round, and two minutes left in the round, which gave Damian Maya too much time on the ground. So check this out, first round, I got my friend here, Danny, from our certified training center in Wolverhampton, United Kingdom. Glad to have him here as well as eight other guys who came from around the world to help us out. So clinch, outside trip, Askren trips and they fall to the ground. But right when they do, goes to the guard, check this out, come around this way. Right when they land here, they land on that open guard and he gets a foot on the hip over here. And at this point, uh, Maya starts scooping under the arm, catches the elbow, hips out, and really creates a real threat. This is the kind of stuff, it's an arm crush, arm bar. This is the kind of stuff only high, high level black belts in jiu-jitsu are even doing. It's a very good submission. What he wanted to do was accomplish this, hip out to the side right here, and by putting pressure on the elbow with this hug, and pushing away on the hip, you can actually hyperextend your elbow. But Ashburn is so resilient, right? He's so funky. So at this point, he sat up and kind of his arm out and he wiggled out of it. Second round. One minute left in the round, another takedown for Askren, perfect fight strategy, but this time they land on the guard, and right away Maya grabs the wrist in the open guard, shoves it, basic triangle, Gracie Combatives basics, and locks it up around the neck right here. Askren, once again, very clever, stands up right away, starts ducking his head out, freeze. At this point, almost plot the transition. Maya transitions to here. What he wants to do, go on your knees, bro. What he wants to do is this, hip out, invert, and break the shoulder. But this is so beautiful. Askren knows that. So as Maya's sitting up, Askren rolls out of it and they end up in the open guard. But here's what's beautiful. Even though Maya didn't get the submission, he got the sweep out of it. So then he passes the guard, he ends up in mount. So that's a triangle and an omoplata attempt right there. He ends up in mount. Then he gets arm pressed off to the side. As they fall, Maya goes for the kimura. Beautiful Kimura attempt right here. He locks up the arm. He's about to twist it, but Ma Askren defends it perfectly once again. He scoots his hips out, falls over the hand. Now uh, Damian Maya can't squeeze the Kimura. Go to your knees, come around, Danny. He walks around, and at this point, Maya lets go, scrambles up, and the round ends because Askren's system is working perfectly at this point. Four minutes of stand-up, one minute of grappling, and if he can control and scramble out of submissions, he's gonna win the fight like this. We go into the third round. And at that point, what is Askren feeling at this point? Man, I'm funky, I'm surviving the submission. But what is Maya thinking, the jujitsu mad scientist? Maya's thinking, he survived my arm crush, he survived my Kimura, he survived my triangle, he survived my omoplata. Let me just go to my checklist database. What's left? Oh, ankle lock, oh, rear naked choke. He went for both of them. So in the third round, there's that single leg with the high chop. So he catches the single leg, boom, Askren takes him down right away. He wraps up his ankle. You guys, he wraps up his ankle from the bottom of the fight. This leg entanglement, even though Maya got taken down, the leg entanglement struck fear into Askren's heart because wrestlers don't like when you touch their feet. So now Askren backs up and sits down, and at that point, Maya once again uses the submission to get the sweep, you guys. Does it get more beautiful than this? He passes the guard, he ends up in full mount, a couple strikes, now mount, here's the problem. Come closer, I need to talk to you guys. I don't want to talk through it to you, I want to talk through you. Listen to me. At this point is when Askren made the critical mistake of going into the grapple with two minutes remaining in that third round. One minute he could survive. Two minutes was two minutes too, was essentially one minute too many, if we had to say something. At this point, now Maya is mounted with almost two minutes left to work from the ground. And that's not a good place to be, my friends. And Maya already knows from the previous round that Askren is a shoulder presser. He's a bench presser, he's a pusher. So at this point, Maya stays lower, because in the previous round, he got his mountain escaped, right? He stays lower and he strikes from here. Right away, he rolls, watch the hook. It goes right through, and we get into a full body triangle on this side over here. Rotate a little, look at that. There's your body triangle. And once Maya locks the body triangle on you, this is pretty much the end, right? This is the ninth rear naked choke of his UFC or and professional MMA career. They fall to the side, they end up right here. And Maya's not letting that go, you guys. At this point, couple strikes, he shoots in, but right away, uh, Aspen grabs the arm and starts pulling it off. Correctly, right? Defending like he does so well. 
couple switches, he's defend, defend, defend. And then what Maya does, something I've never seen done at this level before. What Maya does at this point, he goes in for the choke simulation, but then he grabs both of Askren's arms and spreads the wings. You guys, he spread the wings. And now, what is Askren gonna fight? Because I'm not going for the choke, You're, you grab my arms. If I go for the choke, he grabs me. But if I grab you, how can you grab me as I'm grabbing you? And then at this point, one shot, boom, it was rapid. He gets in, he locks it. Maya, de um, Askren defends the supporting arm. The problem is, as Askren is defending the second hand, keep defending, keep defending, keep defending, keep defending. Eventually, what's happening? Look, Askren passes out momentarily, you guys. So the point is, one-handed choke counts in a back mount situation. A one-handed choke is fully legitimate to put someone unconscious. And that's what people don't realize. You don't need both hands. And for most amateur chokers, you need two hands to squeeze because you think that's what makes it happen. But for Maya, he had one hand wrapping and grabbing the shoulder. The other hand was moving this whole time, but there's pressure being added up. And Maya knows it only takes seven to eight pounds of pressure for a prolonged eight to 10 seconds in order to choke someone unconscious. And Askren, I don't care how tough and funky he is, his neck is subject to the same pressure and he's susceptible to the same unconsciousness as anybody else with arteries flowing blood to and from their brain. And it worked, you guys. This is it. Askren had the perfect fight strategy. Four rounds, or sorry, four minutes of stand-up, one minute of grappling was perfect. But in the third round, he got too comfortable. He said, I'm gonna go to the ground a little sooner because I'm surviving all these submissions. Not realizing that when you have someone like Damian Maya, it's a different story, you guys. Congratulations to both of you guys. Thank you for the fight. Nothing but respect across the board. It was fun to watch. It was like almost like you could watch it right here. Like these guys are getting down right here. Switch! New partners! At this point, you guys, I need to tell you only about one thing. November 24th, something's going down here that we've never done before. November 24th, Street Choke Mastery Seminar in street clothes. Because the only gi is more street than no gi. But the only thing more street than gi is street clothes. So to do this seminar here at Grace University headquarters, Sunday morning, November 24th, 9 a.m. to noon, three hour super seminar, you have to wear t-shirt, you have to wear gi pants, rash guard, a t-shirt over the rash guard, and you have to wear a hoodie over the t-shirt. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be a hero hoodie, it doesn't have to convert. Actually, choose one of your junkie hoodies that don't convert, because at the end of the seminar, we're gonna have a chance to donate all the stretched, kind of used garments that are used during the seminar to a homeless shelter. So, listen you guys, let's make this happen. Sunday morning, November 24th, it's a charity seminar. All proceeds are gonna go to the hashtag lunch bag program, which provides you know meals and positive messages to underserved communities. So check it out, link in bio to make this happen. We'd love to have you guys there. And after the seminar from 9 a.m. to noon, there's a whole day family fun day activities. The first time we've done this, we're gonna transform the whole parking lot, jumpers, crazy stuff, all kinds of kids activities, family stuff, just a bunch of fun. Gracie family fun activities. We hope to see you there. You can do the seminar and the fun day, or you can come just for the fun day. Everyone's invited, it's all for a good cause. November 24th, it's a Sunday next month, the week prior to Thanksgiving. We hope to see you guys there. Thank you to my man, Danny, for coming out. Congratulations, Fran. This guy's rock solid. I rolled with him yesterday, oh my gosh. And all the team from our CTC in Wolverhampton, UK, you guys are killing it. And everybody else around the world, if you're not getting down with Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, what are you waiting for? Find a certified training center at gracieuniversity.com or learn from home. It's totally possible. Like my man Eric, who's holding the camera, has a Gracie garage in Texas, in Houston, right Eric? He's in Houston. So if you're in Houston, hit up his Gracie garage, get down with it. You can learn from anywhere, you guys. Stop believing all the negativity. Stop believing what anybody says about what you can and can't do. If you're dedicated and you want to learn, you can. Gracieuniversity.com. Much respect. Peace.